really important point for us all to hold on to. And elections are stressful. So looking out for each other and recognising that at times when there's a, a sharp word or whatever, that we can de-escalate that afterwards. We can recognise there's a sign that somebody is perhaps themselves not getting enough sleep, not getting enough support, and we can look after each other a bit better. Because if we want to achieve the things that we do for our country, and that is why we are driven to do this, we need to work together, we need to stay together as a team, and we need to look after each other together. Thank you very much. I'm going to take one more question on this, and there's a lady, a very short question, there's a lady in a green top who's been very patient, had her hand up for ages, so uh, Madam, if you wouldn't mind giving us your name and asking a short question of Joe, I'd be very grateful. Thank you very much. My name is Lara Pringle. Unfortunately, um, our family needed to take our local authority to a special educational needs tribunal. It's about time that local authorities spending our taxes are held to account by an ethical code of conduct where they are not allowed to use public taxpayer money to uh, use the, abuse the tribunal system to prevent uh, families with children of special educational needs and severe issues from getting the help that they deserve. Thank you very much. <laughs> SEN and funding generally. Absolutely. And I mean, Lara, it sounds horrendous what you've had to go through. And, and I'm often struck by challenges that people in my own constituency come to my surgery. And as if it isn't difficult enough, if there aren't, as if it's not enough challenges for parents who are dealing with uh, children who have significant health needs or significant emotional needs, uh, on top of the general challenges of being a parent, to then have to fight the system too, just grinds people down. And we need to, we need to make it easier for people and we need to make it more individualized because every, every child, every person is different and will need a different, uh, a different set of support. And too often it's not put in place and it's too much of a fight. And I think it's wonderful when parents fight for that. But the, the thing that's perhaps even most worrying is we know that not all parents have the capacity, the time, the emotional energy, the, the, the health themselves to be able to take that fight on. And so the outcome means that we are failing children who should be getting better support. You're right to raise it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We've got time for one more substantive question and it's from Diana Gray and it's this. How are we going to challenge and win in the north of England? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I would say is we are challenging and winning in the north of England. Uh, and if we look, if we look at uh, council gains in Liverpool, in Manchester, in Hull and other places, and if we look at the types of fabulous candidates who I hope and expect we will welcome to Parliament, people like the first questioner, Lisa Smart, uh, people like Tom Morrison, who was on the stage earlier today, or Cameron Hussain in Leeds, or Laura Gordon in Sheffield. Uh, you know, we have a strong team across the north of England. We have strong constituencies who are working hard and fighting. So we will be winning in the north of England. And, and what are the, the elements that we, that we need to be talking about? I mean, there, there's significant need for investment in infrastructure, you know, high speed two, and things like the Trans-Pennine uh, Railway improvements. I mean, it's 20 years since I lived in Yorkshire, and I remember getting on what was then Northern Spirit, though there was nothing heavenly about it, um, uh, trains uh, to and from work. And, you know, in the recent leadership uh, election, returning to these train services, they don't really seem to have taken a, any kind of step forward in the last 20 years. So there's clearly need for greater investment. I also think there's a mindset shift. I really, I really notice, uh, with apologies to all of you lovely people who are from London and the South East, that there can be an attitude that thinks that that's where the world starts and ends. And there is a hill world outside of London uh, that, that can be dismissed 
and whether that's by the media or by government. Uh, when I was a minister at the Department for Business, I was struck by the fact that I was the only person whose uh, constituency was basically more than an hour by car from London. And they, did, they seemed to find it a bit difficult to know how to get me my ministerial box at the weekend. I said, well, what do you do for everyone else? Well, we just stick it in a car and it goes to them. Uh, and, you know, it, so it, I think there is this, uh, there is this mindset which, which needs to change as well. And, and then, you know, we need to take our Liberal Democrat message. You know, people in the north of England are concerned about Brexit. They're concerned about jobs. They're concerned about the climate emergency. So we need to have the specific policies about investment. We need to recognise the, uh, the full diversity of our United Kingdom. And just as we uh, champion devolution within uh, Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland, we need to make sure that there is genuine power within uh, those cities in the north of England as well. Thank you. I'm going to take a few very quick questions uh, arising out of the question, uh, how are we going to challenge and win in the north? Does anyone want to ask Joe anything um, about that? It's a gentleman in a white shirt who's right at the very back. If you wouldn't mind standing up, sir. Yes, yes, you. You're going to be our first questioner, please. I see there are a couple of stewards running over microphones. Who else would like to ask a question? Anybody else uh, on this? Yes, there's... Um, there's a lady waving just there in, I think, my eyesight's not particularly good. If you wouldn't mind standing up, madam. Just there. Yes, you. Yeah, thank you. You're our next questioner. Let's ask, have our first question, if that's all right. What's my your name, name is Mike Eccles. I come from Brecon and Radnor. I'm a new member of the Labour Party. Of the <laughs> Liberal Party. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, now there's a slip if ever I heard one. I've just joined. Uh, I haven't been in politics for 50 years. And uh, I would just like to ask whether you would consider moving Parliament to Manchester, actually creating a, a Parliament building which was less confrontational, maybe on the uh, idea of a circular Parliament, uh, something that would change the entire dynamic of the uh, interaction between politicians. Would that be something that the Liberal Democrats would support? All right, thank you. Um, and another one, the lady up there with the microphone, yes? Yeah, my name's Harry. I'm from Monmouthshire. My question is actually more based on um, our new MPs that have joined. It's obviously really exciting to see the number rising again in Parliament, but I'm wondering how carefully you're vetting them and whether or not actually you're vetting them to the same extent you would anybody else who was looking to stand um, I've been a Lib Dem supporter for 27 years, um, ever since I was 18, and could vote. And my Liberal values are incredibly important to me. Um, and I'm concerned that some of the people that have joined recently don't share those values, and their voting records show their true colours. All right, thank you very much. And I'm going to take one more question. That's not really about the north of England, but that's fine. Is there anybody who wants to ask a question about the north of England? Yes, gentlemen there, if you wouldn't mind um, standing up, sir. Yes, yes, you in the, uh, in the red, I think, shirt. And uh, what's your question, please? Thank you. Hello, my name is John, John Haig. I'm also a new member. I joined earlier this year, my first conference. Um, in order to gain credibility in the north of England, you have to address the issues that cause all those Brexit voters to vote for Brexit. You need to do that in a credible way, where you, you do some proper polling, some proper analysis, and document it in such a way that the actual issues that caused those people to vote the way they did, misguidedly as it was, and address those questions specifically, and make it absolutely clear that you're doing that. Then, with that credibility, you will have some hope that those people will start to come around. Furthermore, you'll broaden the message as well. But, you know, what, what's, what are the Liberal Democrats going to do to address that specific set of questions? Thank you. And in fact, we had a question that I didn't have time to take, which was about how we get the votes of the 52 people who voted to take back yes. control, the 52% of people who voted to take back um, control. That was connected to that. Joe. Uh, well, first of all, Mike and John, very welcome to our party. Um, Wonderful to, to see you here and with us. Um, on the issue around Parliament, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think the London-centric nature uh, of, uh, uh, of Parliament is an issue. Um, could it be moved? Well, I mean, you suggested Manchester. I, I might proffer Glasgow into the mix. Uh, uh, but uh, but I, think, I think we should be looking at how to reform the way it operates too. I was really disappointed when I saw the artist impressions of the plans for the temporary chamber. Many of you will know that Parliament is basically a massive fire risk at the moment, needs a huge amount of work done to it to make it safe. And it had slightly dropped off the priority list, but after the fire at Notre Dame, uh, it has rightly um, come back onto the agenda. Um, but the temporary chamber that is due to be in place is basically a carbon copy of the existing House of Commons, which to me seems like a massive wasted chance to try something a bit different. I, I don't think it is impossible to have a more civilised politics within the House of Commons chamber as it is, but I think it would be easier to try new ways of doing things if you had a different, uh, a different uh, type of circular chamber or some other design. And the temporary move is a, a perfect opportunity to do that. And therefore, I think currently looks like it will be a missed opportunity. Uh, to Harriet's um, uh, question about the vetting, um, some of you will have seen the Parliamentary Party report yesterday when Alistair Carmichael talked about this. So there is a process for MPs who want to defect to the Liberal Democrats. It's not the exact same process as anybody that wants to become an approved candidate where they go through uh, a full day of, uh, of different uh, assessment tasks, partly because some of those tasks are things like how to, uh, to make a speech or to give a media interview. And clearly for people who have been members of parliament, as experienced members of parliament, some of those skills are already uh, in, in sort of clear, uh, clear sight and have been, have been tested. But there is, uh, to go to the, the, the heart of what you asked really, which was about values, there is an in-depth interview with the chief whip, which is to test exactly that. And I am confident that all of those people who have joined our party in Parliament do share our liberal values. Now, they might not share our views on every single issue, but do you know what conference around this hall? We don't all share views on every single issue as the lively debates that we have on this stage attest to. And we all know that as liberals, it is sometimes possible to reach a different conclusion on a particular policy issue from a liberal perspective. So the values I believe are there, they are being tested and, and that is important. And I will not have heckling please. No, they, are, they are tested importantly. So, I'm sorry, you, you've had your opportunity to ask your question. Um, Joe's answering it. Let's do with the courtesy of listening to the answer instead of heckling from the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll have no heckling from the audience. Thank you. I think conference wants to hear the answer. So there is that test in place and, and I am confident that those values are ones which we share. In terms of John's question, which is a, you know, really important, how do, we, how do we reach out, how do we address some of those genuine grievances which led to that Brexit vote? And as I think I said earlier, of course it's complex, uh, but I think there's two large sort of baskets of reasons why people voted leave. One is on economic issues and the other is on cultural issues. And on economic issues, I do think we need fundamental reform. The economy is not working as well as it should for people or for our planet. And whether it's the policies we're debating tomorrow on the climate emergency or some of the policies we've already debated about how we are able to uh, help people who are on low incomes, we do have and need to put front and centre those policies which will make a difference to people's lives. On the cultural issues, I think bluntly there is a battle going on in our country. Who we are as a country is at stake. And I know that for me and for many of you, the morning after that referendum, the dismay was not just about EU institutions, it was about 
that deeper question of who we are. Are we an open society? Do we value people coming here? Do we think we should work with others to get things done? Do we treat people as individuals and agree that everyone should have equality, no matter what their skin color, no matter what their nationality, no matter what their religion is? And those are the things which feel under threat, and those are the things that we will stand up for as liberals. Thank you very much indeed, Joe. And thank you to all of our questions.